Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the independent particle approximation method. As we all know that Schrodinger wave equation can be solved exactly for hydrogen and hydrogen like system. Have you tried to solve the Schrodinger wave equation for a multi electronic system or a three particle system? For example, a helium atom. A helium atom is an example of a three particle system because it consists of a single nucleus and two electrons in it. So, it is a three particle system. But solving Schrodinger wave equation for this three particle system or any multi electronic system is a difficult process. However, we have to search for methods that will give solution to this problem. Then what are the methods that we will adopt to solve these problems? Here comes the importance of approximation methods in quantum chemistry. From this point onwards, we have to look for approximate solutions rather than exact solutions. Because most of the problems that we encounter in quantum chemistry cannot be solved exactly, so we have to search for approximate solution. So today we are discussing about one such approximation method called independent particle approximation method. It is a very simple approximation method and the basic concept is that or basic assumption we have made is that there is no interaction between the particles. Particle meaning here electrons. For example, if uh, two electrons are kept here and here, there will be no interaction between these two electrons. That is the basic assumption we are uh, taking in this uh, method. Let us illustrate this method by taking helium atom as the example. So, helium atom, we know that uh, helium atom is having a nucleus with charge plus 2e and 2 electrons in it and it is having the atomic number z is equal to 2. So, our aim is to find the energy for this system. So, for that we need the Schrodinger wave equation so, that is hi is equal to e psi. So, this is our Schrodinger wave equation. So, H is the Hamiltonian operator or it is the total energy operator and this is the wave function psi and when this operator operates on this function, we will get the energy of the system. But uh, before that, we need uh, this, we need the expression for this Hamiltonian. So, Hamiltonian is the total energy operator, hence we can write Hamiltonian H as the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy operators. So, this I give us equation 2. Next let us write the expression for these terms, kinetic energy term that will be minus h crore square by 2 m del square minus h crore square by 2 m e del 1 square minus h crore square by 2 m e del 2 square minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r1 minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r2 plus e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r12. These three terms constitute the kinetic energy part. This is the kinetic energy ex, uh, operator for uh, the nucleus and this one is the kinetic energy expression for electron 1 and this one is the kinetic energy expression for electron 2 and this constitute the T. And next uh, this, this three terms constitute the potential energy term. So, this constitute the potential energy of attraction between this nucleus and electron 1. This constitutes the potential energy for attraction between uh, the nucleus and electron 2 and this one will be the potential energy for repulsion between this two electron, electron 1 and electron 2. Here R1 represents the distance between the nucleus, this nucleus and the electron 1, R2 is for this distance and R12 is the distance between electron 1 and electron 2. So, these are the expression. So, I got the Hamiltonian. So, next uh, I will make two assumptions. One is that the mass of the nucleus is much much greater than the mass of the electron. That means the electron for the electron the nucleus seems to be at rest. So, nucleus will be at 
rest. This is one approximation. So, we can neglect this step since it, it constitutes the kinetic energy term for nucleus and since nucleus is at rest, this will be cancelled. And next assumption is the our independent particle approximation method. So, that is there will be no electron electron interaction. So, this is the second uh, assumption that we are taking and there will be since there is no electron electron interaction this term will also get cancelled. So, our Hamiltonian will then become minus h crow square by 2 m e del 1 square minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r 1 minus h crow square by 2 m e del 2 square minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 r 2. So, this will be my equation 4. Then next I can write Hamiltonian h equal h1 plus h2. So, this portion constitute the Hamiltonian for electron 1 and this constitute the Hamiltonian for electron 2 and uh, these are similar to the hydrogen like Hamiltonian. So, I can write this h as h1 plus h2 Hamiltonian for electron 1 and Hamiltonian for electron 2. So, I got the Hamiltonian h. I got the expression for the Hamiltonian h. Next I need the wave function. So, since our system consists of two electron, I can write psi 1 2 and that will be equal to psi of r 1 theta 1 phi 1 comma r 2 theta 2 phi 2. Okay. So, uh, this wave function depends upon the six coordinates and uh, I can write and since our system and we assume that there will be no interaction between the electron, the particles are independent of each other and I can write this psi as psi 1 2 as phi 1 into phi 2. So, this will be my equation 5, this will be my equation 6 and this will be my equation 7. So, I write the wave function psi as the product of 2 1 electron wave function. Okay. Next look, look into this that is uh, what I get is that I got the Hamiltonian and this Hamiltonian is similar to the hydrogen like system. Okay. Just look here. So, we can write this wave function psi as phi 1 and phi 2 and we can consider our helium atom as 2 hydrogen like system this portion. So, that is uh, there is no interaction between these two particles uh, and uh, we can consider the helium as 2 1 electron system. So, next I can write the expression for phi 1 as I need the expression for phi 1 and my phi 1 will be since they are hydrogen like I can write phi 1 as 1 by root pi z by a 0 the whole raised to 3 by 2 e raised to minus z r 1 by a 0. Okay. This will be equation 8. So, here a 0 is the Bohr radius. And this one will be the r 1 distance between electron 1 and the nucleus. So, I can write h 1 phi 1 then when the Hamilton h 1 operates on this phi 1 I will get the energy E 1 phi 1. Without we can solve the Schrodinger equation or without solving we can predict what this energy will be. Since this Hamiltonian is hydrogen like and this wave function is also hydrogen like that means the energy E 1 will be the energy for the hydrogen like system. So, I can write it as minus z square by n 1 square E square by 8 pi epsilon 0 a 0. Okay. Next similarly for electron 2 I can write phi 2 will be 1 by root pi z by a 0 
the whole raised to 3 by 2, e raised to minus z r2 by a0. Then Hamiltonian 2 operate on the wave function 2, I will get e2 phi 2. So, my energy e2 will be minus z square by n2 square e square by 8 by epsilon 0 a0. Since we are considering the ground state of helium atom n1 equal n2 equal 1 and, and we are taking helium atom I can give the value z as 2. So, I can write the total energy for the system as E is equal to E1 plus E2. Okay, E is equal to E1 plus E2. So, I can write minus 2 into 2 times this value minus 2 into Z square by 1 square ground state is uh, N is equal to 1 e square by 8 pi epsilon 0 a0. This will be my equation 15. So, this value minus e square by 8 pi epsilon 0 a0, this value, this value, value will be constant because this constitutes the ground state energy for hydrogen atom. So, that value will be minus 13.604 electron volt. Here I have given uh, reduced mass instead of the electronic mass. So, I will get this value minus 13.604 electron volt. Then I substitute this value here. Then my equation will be E is equal to minus 2 into 2 square into 13.604 electron volt. So, that value will become minus 108.83 electron volt. Okay. So, this value, this is the value I obtained using this uh, theory. Then what is next is that I have to compare this with my, uh, this with the experimental value. So, the experimental value for the helium atom is obtained as minus 79 electron volt. So, this value is obtained uh, by considering its first and second ionization energy and E experiment will be minus 79 electron volt. Then see the difference. So, delta E will be E experiment minus E theory will be that have uh, got a difference of approximate 29.83 electron volt. So, there will be a difference of uh, 29.83 electron volt. Okay. This will make an error of about 38 percentage. So, just look into here. That is this much error means this is a serious error. So, why this error has come? Because we have neglected this particular term. So, that means that this is not a simple term to be neglected. So, we have to account of, account that term for uh, getting better energy. So, we can use, uh, we can improve this approximation method by taking it into account of that term uh, by some other methods like uh, perturbation method, self-consistent field method, etc. So, even though this independent particle approximation method gives an error of 38 percentage, approximate 38 percentage, this has got some advantage. This can be used as a starting point for various other approximation methods or various other approximation methods like uh, Hattree's method, Hattree fork method, etc. So, that is the importance of uh, this method because this method is a very simple method. So, we can uh, compare the multi electronic system with the hydrogen like system and we can derive the uh, uh, without deriving the entire Schrodinger wave equation, we can easily get the energy and wave function of the system, but it will give some error. So, we have to improve this method by using uh, other methods like a perturbation method and self, con self consistent field method. So, that is about the independent particle approximation method. Thank you.